there are three things I want to share with you. Number one, your growth process is complete. Number two, there's nothing going wrong in your life, nor has there ever been. And number three, you're not alone. They are, in fact, what I would call the three biggest secrets that I learned in my mm -hmm. conversations with God. The, the biggest secret of life is that our growth process is complete. In fact, I'll, I'll go further. Growth was never necessary to begin with. That you were completely evolved when you came here. That is, at the moment of your birth. You were born in a state of utter perfection. And if you want to see perfection, perfection personified, as I call it, just look into the eyes of a baby. You, you, you will see it there. Nothing is wanted, nothing is needed, nothing is missing. You're looking into the face of perfection. Most people don't understand that they were finished with what they imagined they came here to do before they arrived. That, that the purpose of life was not to somehow get better or, or grow up, you know, oh, grow up spiritually or to become somehow more than you now are. That the purpose of life is not to become more than you are, but to be who you are and who you were the moment you arrived. Now, the, the problem is if we think we are here to become somehow more than we were when we arrived, that, we, that, the, that the purpose of life is to evolve into something greater, the, the problem with that is we think that there's something we have to do or to be or to have, that we have to acquire something somehow or another, more wisdom, more understanding, more clarity, and for that matter, that there are physical things we need to acquire as well in order to be the fullest expression of who we really are. But the process works exactly in reverse. In fact, there's nothing for us to be or to do or to have that we are required to be, do, or have in order to express who we really are. The process works precisely in reverse. We are not here to acquire anything but to give everything. We are not here to acquire, but to give, to demonstrate. Life is about demonstration. It's not about evolution. So we've not come here to somehow get stuff, even to get more wisdom, more clarity, more understanding, none of that. We are here to give and to demonstrate the clarity, the understanding, the awareness, the consciousness that we came in here with. However, the culture teaches us exactly the opposite. The, the culture into which we were born here on this planet teaches us, you know nothing, you got a lot to learn, you got a long way to go, buddy, blah, blah, blah. And furthermore, interestingly enough, some of the religious culture actually teaches us that what we need to learn, what we need to understand is ultimately ungraspable. That is, it's out of our reach. And that what I understood then in this flash of insight that I received in my conversations with God is that you are perfect just the way you are right now. Or to put it in simple terms, which is difficult for some people to grasp or to embrace, you are divine. That, that is, you are my begotten child. Not just my only begotten son, but you are all my begotten sons and daughters in whom I am well pleased. And your job is not to somehow get better or become more than you are now, but simply to demonstrate who you are right now. And why? Why bother demonstrating who you are right now? What's the purpose of that? So that, I was informed, God might know self experientially through the expression of life in every one of its forms, including the form that we call you. Now, what, what this meant to me as a practical matter, how you apply that kind of insight into daily life, because people say to me, well, you know, okay, great, but how does that work in nine to five life? Is that I discovered that when I give what I wanted to receive as if I already have it, then I would experience the havingness of it. Let me, let me be real clear about that. God, God put this to me, Claire, in conversations with God in three simple words, be the source. Be the source became the guiding principle of my life. And whenever I found myself wanting anything, gee, I wish I had a little bit more money right now. Gosh, I wish I had a little bit better, smoother going in my relationship. Gosh, I wish my health was a little bit better. Or I wish I had more wisdom, more clarity, more understanding, more uh, awareness. I wish I had more 
of something or another. Whenever I found myself wishing for more, I would sit down and think, I wonder if there's anybody else around me in my life, friend or stranger, who also wants more of that, who might even imagine themselves to have less of that than I do. Yeah, I wonder who, how that might work. And I began to decide that I would be the source of what I wished to experience in my own life in the life of another. And so I went out and, and looked for people who had who, who, who imagined that they did not have enough money, and I gave them some of the money that I had, even though, as a practical matter, I was experiencing that I did not have enough money. I just decided to say to say to myself, what if I had enough? What if what I had right now it was enough? And what if it was so much, in fact, that I could actually afford to give some of it away? And I began to give away what I thought I had not enough of. I did the same thing in other areas of my life. I wanted more patience, more understanding, more compassion, more partnership, really. And I found other people who wanted more of the same thing. It's not easy, by the way, to, 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 uh, to, to, I mean, it's not difficult, I should say. I'm trying to say it's not difficult to find people like that. It's easy to find them. They're all over the place. So I, I simply found uh, people who wanted the same thing I wanted. And I decided to be the source of it, to be the source of compassion, of caring, of understanding, of patience, of forgiveness and of companionship and of love. And what I discovered was that when I was a companion to another and to all others whose lives I touch, suddenly I was companion and I was never lonely anymore. When I was the source of patience and understanding and compassion in the lives of others, suddenly I experienced those same things flowing through me because I discovered that what flows through you sticks to you. And I was able to suddenly mm. experience my having this of what I thought I didn't have enough of. And as I began to experience my heaviness of it, that experience of havingness, what I call in my cosmology havingness, that experience of, experience of having that actually acted as a magnet and drew more yeah. of it, drew more of it to me because I, because my purpose was not to have it all for myself, but to give it away. Get this, get this twist. My purpose was not to have it for myself, but to give it away. And when your purpose mm -hmm. is to give it away, to others, the universe supplies you with an unlimited amount of it because it knows there are a lot of people out there who are suddenly depending on you to be the source of it. And that's the secret. Every master who has ever walked the earth from Jesus mm. to the Buddha, to, to, to Muhammad, to any master who has walked the face of the earth, they have become masters by giving what it is they chose to experience to others. And the universe has supplied them with an ample amount of it that they would never run out because their initial motivation was not to gather it all for themselves, but simply to be a flow through that others might have it in abundance. That's why some of the masters actually said, they said in these words, I have come that you might have life in abundance and live it even more abundantly. That was their whole purpose, their whole raison d'etre. And when it becomes yours and mine, everything will change.